Hello everyone, thanks for watching. Today I'm going to discuss my editing techniques for aviation photography using Lightroom and Photoshop. Today's image is a Singapore Airlines Airbus A330 on takeoff. It's captured in quite overcast weather, but I've managed to use some pretty good camera settings that haven't washed out the sky too much, but still kept detail, especially in the livery. The settings I like to use are 1 800th, 1 1000th, or 1 1250th of a second. Biggest aperture you can get away with for the lens you're using, and ISO 200 or ISO 250. If you tend to go a little higher, it tends to get a little bit noisy, especially when the objects are further away. The runway I was capturing was quite close. This is probably about 300 metres away, so 250, 300 metres away, so pretty close. 85 millimetres perfectly got the picture in the frame and has also got relatively good detail, as you can see here. It's pretty, pretty sharp. A little noisy, but we can remove that, but the detail is quite good. So the first step I normally do is I crop first. Um, because this image is pretty much in the center, we don't need to do any corner cropping. We can just crop from top and bottom. Three by two is the normal aspect ratio. And I'm gonna put the third line on the top of the nose there. So there's not too much at the top or bottom of empty sky. So that's pretty good. Next step is white balance. Now there's several different ways you can capture white balance. But one of the best ways is to actually click on a white surface of the plane. And we've got plenty at the back here. So I'm just going to click on that. And it's already set 5850, which is pretty close. So I'm going to leave it at that. It's not too warm and it's not too blue either. Next step is to remove chromatic aberration, lens corrections, and some dehazing. Uh, because this is an Olympus lens, the lens profile corrections are already done in camera, so there's no profile to be done. So all I'm going to do is remove chromatic aberration. And as you can see, there's a little bit on the front edge there. So 4 and 4 is pretty good. We'll not need to select any colors because it pretty much does it automatically. And that's it for chromatic aberration. Now for dehazing, because this image was captured relatively close and in overcast weather, we don't need to dehaze very much. So normally, if you do about 100, it makes the object, uh, the subject too tight, uh, too uh, dark, and then uh, ruins the image. So I'm going to only dehaze about 10, and that's all we need. Dehazing is only really useful when you're capturing high above the ground, and you get that blue uh, filter almost across it, and it. Um, ruins the image so dehazing tries to fix that but we don't really need to do that here dehazing does underexpose so you have to be careful when using it okay the next step is to do some shadows and whites and blacks first step is to do the highlights and shadows now highlights because this image is relatively well exposed we don't need to be turning things down too much so I'm only going to do about 50. And because the shadows are relatively good too, I'm only going to go up to about 60, 50 to 60, because if you go up too much, it tends to produce quite a bit of uh, noise detail because the, the dark pixels haven't been captured very well. So you're trying to darken almost clipped pixels, which doesn't turn out that great. Now for whites, a technique I learned recently is to hold down the alt key on a windows machine and to drag the whites until you start to see some white spots showing like this which is clipping but because this image has a bright sky we don't need to do as much and if you look at the histogram it's quite far to the right but that's actually the sky it's not an overexposed image it's just the sky that's slightly overexposed, but it's not ruining the image. So I'm gonna do about 30 there. Now for blacks, it's the same thing, you just go to the left, hold down Alt, and then go to the left until you see some black spots, which already start to show there on the landing gear, which isn't much of a problem. So I'm just gonna do it until it starts showing on the tires, which it just did then. So that's 
That's that done. Next step is to do a little bit of clarity. Normally I turn it up a bit, but for this image, it's not really required because clarity does darken the black areas. So I'm only going to do about 10 to 12. Vibrance. This image is a little undersaturated, so I'm going to turn up vibrance a little bit just to bring out the colors. Not too much because it, it turns the bottom yellow. And then when you try and remove yellow saturation, it will ruin the livery. So I'm going to go to 20. And saturation up a little bit too. It's about 10. That's good enough. Now the next step is to do the curve. Now because I want relatively high contrast to bring out detail, I'm going to select point curve, medium contrast. Just keeping an eye on those blacks too to make sure they don't become too too ugly, especially when you try and brighten up already dark pixels. Um, now here it's just a matter of playing. Um, I'm not going to do much here because it's relatively good at the moment. Um, I'm just going to turn up darks a bit because it's a bit dark on the undercarriage there. Just to bring out the detail, Photoshop will bring out more so we don't need to do too much here. Okay, I'm not going to fiddle with colours because the colours are pretty good as it is here because of the quite good exposure. I actually shot this on manual mode so it wasn't changing the aperture to suit the sky and then darkening the aircraft too much. Okay, uh, the next step is to do noise reduction. Now because this is shot as ISO 200, there is a little bit of noise. So I'm going to, sh to select 45 noise reduction, which is pretty good for ISO 200. It's not over the top and still keeps detail relatively well. That's pretty good. Some cameras you can go shoot at ISO 800, ISO 1000 and have no problems whatsoever with noise. Micro Four Thirds cameras I have a little bit more noise problem than some other cameras, but it's been doing me good so far, so no need to change. Now for sharpening, I'm going to do a lot of sharpening in Photoshop, so I'm just going to do some uh, pre-sharpening here. I'm going to load a preset, which I use for other images. That's 50 radius, 1.1, 50 detail, and 40 masking. Now, one thing I learned recently is to not sharpen the whole image, you only sharpen the edges. So what you do is you hold down Alt on a Windows machine and dra drag this masking slider up until just the edges are showing. So at the moment, this edge on the top of the aircraft here is important because it's white against the white sky. So we need to make sure that that's showing. So 75 is good. So that's only going to sharpen the edges. And it's going to keep the rest of the aircraft relatively good. Uh, it's always a problem to get this, these Alliance stickers and registrations and things like that perfectly sharp because it's pixels close together. So you're going to always lose detail there. Um, I'm not going to fiddle with camera calibration because I, I'm not the greatest fan of natural now. It's too, too oversaturated. So... I'm going to leave it at that. Now that's the primary Lightroom work done. I'm not going to adjust contrast on this image because that will be done in uh, Photoshop and I'm not going to adjust exposure because it's pretty good as it is. And we can use Detail Extractor on Photoshop to darken the sky actually. So that's the Lightroom first phase done. So we're going to go into Adobe Photoshop 2017. Olympus gives you a great deal. You end up only paying 13 Australian dollars a month for both software, which is a steal. Okay, so now we're in Photoshop. Now the first step to do is make sure you have installed the wonderful add-on called Nick Collection from Google. It's a free add-on. The full version is updated regularly and it's very good for contrast. Very good for detail sharpening and extremely good for HDR and black and white effects. I'm just going to demonstrate some of those now. So what we're going to do is for black and white use Silver FX Pro. And you can really get some good detail 
on black and white, especially when you start fiddling with some of the lower options here. So things like fine art and borders and things like that. Because this is um, not a black and white style of image, uh, it's not very good to show, but it's a very powerful tool for particularly um, landscapes. Uh, architectural work, cityscape, so if you want to get a vintage effect it's quite good. I was playing with a HDR using this uh, these um, settings and it actually works quite good. Film Noir is very good for a vintage effect. If you're capturing old buildings and you want to get that vintage effect Silver Effects Pro 2 is an excellent tool for that. So that's the end of the product display. Now let's use my tools for aviation photography. First step is to remove noise. It was already kind of done in Lightroom, but define to just remove some of that finer stuff. Um, I'm not really into fiddling with the settings too much. I'm not really sure how to do that. So I just use um, automatic method and it seems to work pretty good. Don't lose a lot of detail, so that's the main thing. The next step is to use um, Color Effects Pro. Um, normally, at this stage, I would use Raw Pre Sharpener, but because this is a relatively sharp image to start with, I'm not going to use that tool because this actually sharpens over the entire image, which I'm not intending to do. Um, as you can see here, this is the before and after, and it's actually losing detail. Um, and if you sharpen areas, it's even worse. So I'm actually going to not use raw pre-sharpener here, because I actually did do edge sharpening in Lightroom. So it's pretty much done it already. Although it does actually look quite good. And a lot of... Um, Photo sites are turning me down for over sharpening, so I'm not going to use raw pre sharpener on this. Uh, if I was capturing a still image at a gate or a hangar or something like that, yeah, I probably would use it, but not not for the moving object. So my next step is Color Effects Pro. Now there's some filters that I use for this sort of photography: tonal contrast is the first one. This is contrast in areas of highlights, midtones, and shadows, and it's a very subjective setting. Uh, because there's a lot of shadows in this particular image, I'm going to focus more on those. So, and it's a very fine adjustment; it doesn't actually do a lot. Um, so, as you can see, 100% is a little too far, but still effective. And it's, I like focusing on the detail of the wing here this engine and at the back on the tail there. So I'm just going to do about 30, 35. Uh, midtones, there's not actually a lot of midtones on this image. It's mainly in the sky. And um, I'm, I'm going to turn it up a bit to get that sky out, but without affecting the actual subject. So just going to make sure that I'm not affecting midtones on the subject. But it looks pretty good. Oh, adjusting the wrong one. Um, I'm going to go up to about 50 because that it's bringing out the sky and bringing the aircraft here further forward in the image and this line here is very important so it's helped there um, highlights there's highlights in the sky and highlights on the aircraft which I don't really want to touch but um, I'm going to turn it up just a little bit there um, you can always use Lightroom to get rid of if things are too bright or too dark uh, after you export the TIFF back into Lightroom, you can just adjust. And that's actually very, very good. Very, very good. So, if we remove tonal contrast, you can see that the sky is quite washed out in this area here under the wing, engine cowling. If we select it, it's in effect brought the aircraft forward a bit. This area on here needs some work, but overall, quite good. I'm happy with that. The next is polarization. Um, because there's not a lot of polarizing required, there's no sun, there's no water, 
This isn't terribly effective, um, but I'm going to use it a bit. Just, it's more for detail in the tail. Um, it, this does work if you are shooting with the sun behind you or directly shining down from the top left or top right hand corner. It helps, but or indoors too, but because th there was actually no sun, um, this isn't going to work very well. So I'm just going to do a little bit there. It's more just my, my feel, what looks good here. Uh, the next one is Detail Extractor. Um, this is good for fine adjustment. Um, this is a filter that can go over the top very, very quickly. So it's important not to use it too much. We'll just demonstrate here on 100. Uh, as you can see, what it does, it's, it's almost uh, uh, reverse contrast or um, white sharpening. It's, it's sharpening white areas. It's, it's creating contrasting white to dark areas in, bright, in existing bright areas. So um, it's good for washed out areas, but not good for aircraft because they're mostly painted white. So here I'm going to do about 30. 35 is, 25 to 35 is probably the limit for this particular subject. And as you can see, it's starting to look a little unrealistic. So I'm going to stick back to 20. Um, contrast is contrast on the filter, and this is a very sensitive adjustment. So um, I tend to only use like single digits here. So, but it's good for particularly washed out skies. It's very very good. Um, I'm just going to stick stick to that. That's pretty good. Saturation I don't fiddle with because that's adjusting something I've already set. So I'm going to put that at zero. And the final one is contrast only. Um, this is just basically contrast. Um, I like using it for the soft contrast filter. Oh, soft contrast setting on this filter. Um, it For some reason it has a contrast only set on 50. So um, I always adjust that for straight away. Now soft contrast as you can see is um, matching this undercarriage with the side here. And we are actually losing a little detail there. So it's important not to go over the top. That's good. Minus seven, you know. Um, it's good for areas where you want an even contrast across the subject. Particularly aircraft, which are, again, mostly painted white. Okay, that's pretty good. Okay, so that's it for Colorflex Pro 4. And I'll demonstrate the... So there's the settings before the filters. And that's after, so very, very good there. Um, I'm just going to zoom in with Control and Plus and have a look and see how much sharpening needs to be done. Yeah, it's going to require a bit of work. So for sharpening, I use Output Sharpener. Um, this is very easy to go over the top, so you've got to be very careful. Because I haven't used raw pre-sharpener, um, it's probably not going to be as bad as normal. Um, but as you can see, it's already sharpened, so quite well. So before, it's not quite in focus. Now, the areas that you need to watch is under the wings and engine cowling and tail and landing gear, back of the engine. Um, because this is not shot terribly far away, it's not such a big issue. But if you're shooting with a 400, 500 millimeter lens, this can become an issue, especially when you have to turn up ISO to compensate for the lens focal length, because there's probably very few 400 millimeter f2.8 lenses out there that allow you to shoot on ISO 200. So, okay, we're just gonna focus on here at the moment. Now, adaptive sharpening is for, um, Basically for monitors and stuff, so and I I want to actually turn it down so and keep it so it's not over sharpening. Now here output sharpening, I'm actually going to turn down because I don't want to go over the top. The so zero is obviously no good, but a hundred is no good either. So two hundred's over the top, especially here. It's 
it's a mess. So you get that pixelation, you get that grain, which you don't want. So I'm going to stick to 70. Uh, focus is something that's important to adjust because obviously shooting a fast moving object, it's hard to be completely in focus, even at 1 1,000th. So I'm going to just turn it up a little bit. And as you can see, it's already worked. Now this is something that's um, picked up on aviation websites, so be very, very careful with this sharpening. Okay, so that's pretty good. Local contrast is, it doesn't really sharpen, it just is like that um, detail extractor. It kind of works like that, or the um, contrast only. It's kind of working like that. It's basically sharpening up edges. Or black areas around sharpen areas, uh, black areas around dark edges. It's sharpening in the vicinity of those. So be very careful again. As you can see, it's washing out this engine. So, well, not washing out. Sorry, um, losing detail. So I'm actually gonna keep it about where it is. Now, structure is very important. Structure is actually, uh, almost like radius on regular sharp sharpening uh, tools. So it's very important that you don't go over the top because then you get it very, very sharpened. You get that pixelation. So I don't tend to touch this, really. I'm actually going to leave that at zero because... It's already pretty, pretty darn good, so... I just want to get the writing relatively good. Okay, so that's the sharpening done. So I'm just going to save that. Now, before we go back into Lightroom, there's two very important things. Firstly, you have to make sure that the image looks good. And it seems to, it's all right. It's probably a tick over sharpened, but for this video, it's fine. I've already published this photo on Flickr with different settings. So this isn't too bad. Okay, that's all right. I haven't got the greatest lens in the world, but my 75 to 300 f6.3 lens is pretty good. Pretty good. Um, and next step before you export into Lightroom, down here it says the size is 324 megabytes. That's because we've created layers. Uh, you don't want to be saving this with these layers, otherwise it's going to be a massive file. So it's important that you flatten the image. Um, if you're working with panoramas, if you're working with full frame cameras, if you're working with uh, images with lots of color already in them where the size is bigger anyway, uh, these files can be two, three gigabytes. So it's important that you flatten the image before you export into Lightroom. And that just takes the top layer pretty much and um, puts that on top and deletes, I think it deletes the others. I'm not sure how it works, but it, Reduces the size. So 81 megabytes. Um, I'm expecting a size about that because there is color information in this image. And it hasn't been cropped down too much before I did a 3x2 crop. So it's captured this top and bottom detail here. And usually I crop 16x9 which reduces the size again. So save that. It's saved as a TIF which is like a uncompressed or very light, slightly compressed picture file. It's not a JPEG. It's not a GIF. It's not a um, other other form of image. Or BMP is another one that's a big size. So that's pretty good. So now close this. Go back into Lightroom. So now we have the TIF file automatically loaded. And if we compare the image that we started with, that's with all the Lightroom adjustments, and then add the Photoshop adjustments, you can see it's very, very good. I'm I'm actually quite happy with this. This is probably my usual standard. And the histogram has changed. Um, it's very, very smooth now at the top. So that means the um, colors have been sorted. Um, it's not overexposed. Uh, there's some detail back in the black areas, especially. Um, I like that detail on the wing there. It's caught out caught the detail nicely. One thing I'm going to do is do noise reduction because sharpening is in effect adding noise. I'm just going to go 15. That's just going to should go a little bit more. 
25. Don't want to go too much because you lose all your sharpening work. But that's just fix that detail there. So that's an image I'm happy with exporting. Um, I hope you enjoyed my workflow. If there's any tips you've got for me with creating sharper images, that would be nice. If you like shooting with a different actual camera setting, please let me know and I'll start experimenting with that. I'm going to Singapore Changi Airport in a few weeks' time, so I'm going to be shooting some different sorts of aircraft. Normally where I am, we get basically 737s and A320s all the time. So these A330s are something a bit different. I hope you enjoyed my video. I hope you learned something. If you've got any comments about how you edit photos, how I can improve my work, please leave some comments down. I'll be happy to respond. If you don't like my images, please say, and I'll try and provide some feedback on how I capture and why, why I like these settings. Please like and subscribe to my channel, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks.